Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface, and it's really nice that today on this Friday evening here for us in the UK, uh, I've got the opportunity to, to bring a video to you that ultimately has a happy ending. I mean, we've got to go on a little bit of a journey today, but it's all about the journey, isn't it? But ultimately, it has a real happy ending, and I, I get a lot of people message me, and uh, the emails usually start with, uh, hey Az, uh, love the channel, or, or love your videos, uh, but. <laughs> you can always tell when a, an email starts off with a compliment, yeah, there's going to be a but dropped after it. But! Eh. Uh, but they tend to say, but, is there any chance that you could make more positive orientated videos? Now, I understand what these people are trying to say. I don't, I don't roll my eyes and be like, Ugh, whatever. Uh, and they're not asking me to be a shill. I, I understand that. They're, they're trying to say, you know, there's, we understand there's a lot of crap <laughs> that goes on in the gaming industry. Ugh, Lord knows we hear about it every day. But is there, you know, is there some positive news that you can garner in the same manner? No, they're not asking me to stop doing what I'm doing. Uh, they're just asking, you know, to see if there's anything uh, positive that's going on in the game world that I can talk about. And I've always maintained, look, if there is, if there's something that I deem uh, to be a, a, a legit positivity, not just, you know, oh, a, an okay game came out this week. If I think there's a, a an action at a company uh, where they have gone above and beyond to cater for their audience or to cater for, for the actual industry itself, something which would be beneficial to the industry. I will report that all day long. I'll do a video on that all day long. And in essence, this is what today's video is about. It's not just because I'm a, a fan of Final Fantasy or anything like that. I would do this video if I didn't even play this game or didn't even have an affiliation with this game, simply because of what it does. But We'll get to it all in a moment. There's some background that we need to fill in first. Now, when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV releasing their expansions, they have three fan fests, essentially cons. And one is set in America, uh, one is set in Europe, and then the third and final one is set in their home country, Japan. And so uh, this gives them the good opportunity to see fans from all around the world as opposed to a con in a singular country, forcing everyone to go over there, and then when there's an alternative, possibly a smaller version of it in Europe, cancelling it and not turning up. Not looking at anyone. Not looking at anyone, Blizzard. Not looking at anyone. Games con. Not looking at anyone. Uh, no, but it, in all seriousness, it gives them the opportunity to uh, go around the world, see American fans, European fans, and obviously people who travel from afar to go to these cons, and be on home territory. And when they're at home territory back in Japan, then the con is m much bigger than it is in America or Europe. It, it, it's huge. Um, and so it also, uh, very conveniently, allows them to distribute snippets of information about the upcoming expansion. So in America, they might release a job. In uh, Europe, they might release a race. Uh, you know what I mean. Uh, and, and more and more details about the expansion. And then finally, when they're in home territory again in Japan, they can fill in all the missing pieces. The jigsaw can be complete and everybody knows what to expect for the upcoming expansion. Now, this year, the first two cons went fine, went really well. Uh, in actual fact, uh, after the second con, which was the one set in uh, Germany, in Europe, uh, which I was invited to and unfortunately couldn't attend. Uh, which breaks my heart. Uh, the feeling after the first two was one of great positivity. Uh, we'd had the Vieira race announced. Well, we knew it was coming, put it that way. It had been teased uh, dramatically. Uh, we knew that the Gunbreaker class was there. And we knew that there was likely likely uh, going to be a dancer class added as well. So, uh, spirits are up. The expansion Shadowbringers looking great. Uh, a, a really interesting premise, flipping everything on its head, going to an alternative version of the world, becoming the Warrior of Darkness as opposed to the Warrior of Light. There was a lot of things to be interested, intrigued, and excited about. And then when they had their final con in Japan, it, uh, I, I wouldn't say 
was controversial, but uh, some decisions on, and some announcements were made which a uh, portion of the community were not happy with. And there was, and I do have to stress, uh, a, a very, very small minority uh, which went overboard. I mean, seriously overboard. But there were some things which people were expecting that never happened. Number one, they, expand, uh, they expected the dancer class, but they expected the dancer class to be a healer. The dancer class was announced, but the dancer class was a ranged physical DPS instead. They also announced the Viera race, the Bunny Girls. And I've got my Bunny Girl Fran, uh, Play Arts Kai figure, obviously. Uh, the race which appears in Final Fantasy XII. But people are expecting male Viera to also be announced. And they weren't. Instead, they announced a new male-only race, which was the Hrothgar. So you had a female-only Viera, male-only Hrothgar. And this caused people to be slightly disappointed. On top of that, uh, Yoshi P did announce that because of these two new races and, the, and the, the way that every race that they do in Final Fantasy XIV has its own individual skeleton structure, etc. They're not reskinned. And so they said because of the structures of the skeletons that they had to do for the classes, uh, they couldn't put headgear or glasses or things like that on these characters. Put the other, all the other armors on, but headgear, no. Glasses, stuff like that, no. So there was uh, a wee bit of disappointment because what people expected never came to pass. It was disappointment. It wasn't a controversy. Uh, it wasn't a riot. Yes, there were voices saying, oh, come on. Now, they have, they being square, they have something called a uh, letter from the developers or live with the developers. And once a month or so, they sit down and they, they do a panel where they talk about the game. Uh, and for three and a half years now, they haven't done a physical version of it, which is what you see here, the letter of developer. And so uh, Yoshi P, who's the producer, uh, actually wrote one. And he, he addressed, this came, kind of totally came out of the blue. And he addressed all the major issues which people had uh, about the um, he, uh, the healer not being added, why it was a physical DPS, and he breaks down very clearly as to why. And it makes sense. When you read through what he actually says, it's, it's not done because they were trying to be ourselves. It wasn't done because they're trying to subvert your expectations. Boy, do we hear that a lot recently. <laughs> Uh, no, it was done because of the way that the game had been structured, because the amount of tanks that are in the game at the moment versus healers versus physical, uh, melee DPS versus range DPS versus magical DPS. So it, there was decisions based on that. So when you read through his decisions, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yes, it's a shame for the people that wanted a healer, but it makes sense. When it comes to the Viera and Hrothgar, however, when it comes to the uh, race... I think this is what people are a little bit more disappointed about. Their reasoning was there had been a, a, a lot of requests for a more bestial race uh, to be added to the game. There wasn't anything, you know, kind of monstery, uh, sort of Torren esque if you're a World of Warcraft fan, or a, you know, something like that. Everything was kind of humany, humanoid, uh, or small humanoid. There was nothing that really uh, separated. And so they decided that, we'll, well, we'll do the Hrothgar, which uh, were in Final Fantasy X, uh, Kimari. Final Fantasy X. So if you're a Final Fantasy fan, think of Kimari. It's it's that race. And then, of course, you had the Viera, Final Fantasy XII, and other Final Fantasies. But just Fran is a perfect example of a Viera from Final Fantasy XII. Uh, so you've got the Bunny Girls. Now, I think if you had polled the community about this, and this is complete speculation, of course, I, I think that the the people would have said, well, maybe don't bother with the, the Hrothgar and give us male bunnies instead. I got a feeling that would have probably have won out. But what I really respect about Yoshi P, and this is why I have a, a big love um, for Final Fantasy XIV, is... Yoshi P does try, and he's very strong-minded, by the way. He won't be 
like backed into a corner that he doesn't want to be backed into. Uh, he will try and put a, gr a, a diversity, a diverse portfolio of everything in the game. Of everything, ranging from content to location, two races, two jobs. And so that way, sure, you're going to disappoint some people, but you're going to make others happy. And, and why that works is people can gravitate towards certain things. Not everyone, like we have in certain MMOs, R RPGs, are just funneled into the same crap all the time. They legitimately have choices about what they want to do, what they like, what they enjoy, what piques their interest, and it doesn't have to be the same thing. And that's why I, I have a, a great deal of respect uh, for Yoshi P. And he has the same mentality when it comes, like I said, to jobs, to races. Uh, and so I appreciate that, and I understand and I respect his decision. However, with that decision made and set in stone... Um, one thing that uh, the development team uh, were kind of not disappointed or upset about was the development team uh, l understood the disappointment of the community when Yoshi P said, we're not going to be able to put headgear or glasses on the new races. But you can see a couple of pictures here of a Hrothgar with glasses and a Viera with glasses. So what the development team did, and this this is in no way a stab at any other com uh, company whatsoever. This is just praise for Square and the Final Fantasy XIV crew. What the developers did was in their spare time, not on the clock, in their free time, the development team, and this is without Yoshi P's uh, knowledge whatsoever. So this wasn't done to garner any sort of favor. This wasn't done as a, as a let's get a pat on the head. This wasn't done at the behest of the of the company. Something we, we see a lot of details about crunch recently. No, these people, without Yoshi P's uh, input, knowledge... They took in their, they went in their spare time and started working on trying to get hats and glasses, headgear and glasses onto these brand new races, which would have taken a lot of time and effort. And they announced that they have actually managed in, in the time since the last fan fest until now, they have created. Uh, or allowed the headgear and glasses of more than 540 extra pieces of equipment that could be worn in headgear and eyewear. 540 unpaid in their free time purely, purely for the community. And, and, and one of the reasons why I imagine they did it is because Glamour... Uh, Transmog, if you're a World of Warcraft fan, um, or costumes or whatever, outfits, if you're an Elder Scrolls fan. Uh, it's because glamour is such an important part in Final Fantasy fourteen. How you look as a character is such an important aspect. And so uh, glasses and headgear can play a, a significant role in your look, in the way that you want the character to be. And so I just think this is incredible. This is a, a selfless act, purely for the community, and and I, I got you know I, I don't know the word to say it's quite emotional, quite emotional in as much as you know we've just seen in in recent well months now uh, companies that just treat their communities like wallets, purses, uh, like idiots, um, uh, constantly insulting them. Uh, all this kind of stuff. We just see this disgusting behavior, particularly in the West. This disgusting behavior by companies. And then you've got Square Enix here with their Final Fantasy MMORPG, which probably has, I don't know, a million subscribers around about there at the moment. Maybe 1.2 million. Let's just say around about there. And uh, they have gone above and beyond in their spare time to, to do this, to add 540 
items which were they were told could not be put on these on these figures purely for them. I think it's great. I think it's I think it's wonderful. I think it shows the true motivations of this game and this team. Now, sure, money is an issue. This is uh, one of the things that Yoshi P does discuss is the cost of developing a playable race and why uh, they didn't add female um, Hrothgar and male Vieira. Now, he's, he's saying there might come a time in the future that we can do this. There might. That's not... It will happen. It's a it's a might and no more. But he so you know cost is uh, an issue, but you can clearly see number one because this didn't need to be done whatsoever. Number two, the uh, the wonderful developers who added these five hundred and fifty odd pieces. That this is a this is a team who love the game. I mean, legitimately love the game, love their community, and want nothing more for them to be happy. It does kind of choke you up a little bit, doesn't it? Well, if you've got a heart, I suppose. Uh, but I just think it's a great, a great video for Friday. I think it's a great video um, to show that there are good people, good developers, and, and good motivations out there when we are uh, beset by a mitigated greed uh, with a load right now. This is looking after a community. This is having respect for your community. And to be quite honest with you, this goes above and beyond for your community. So kudos and props to Yoshi P and his crew. And kudos and props uh, for why... Uh, I can't wait for Shadowbringers. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.